Orthodox Church. The people who follow the Han Mother are heretics. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the six Marys, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are connected uh, to uh, saints, uh, uh, or, or married uh, to saints in the spiritual world. Uh, for sure. example, Jesus and uh, Confucius, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are six persons in the spiritual world. Yeah. Augustine also. Sure. Socrates. Uh, I mean the whole the whole notion of six marriages or sixty marriages or six hundred marriages is basically the pro the process of restoration. Mm -hmm. You know, because the world has world when the world was created, it was created as one man and one woman, and so that was supposed to be the start of human history. Mm -hmm. But the world progressed from the from the that family level to the social yeah. plan, plan national and world level. And so there's been an expansion of human history, an expansion of the fallen lineage. Mm -hmm. So when you get to the point of the mission of the Messiah, the, mis the Messiah actually has to reverse that fall. So that means that the, the wor at, from the world level has to be reduced to the individual level. It means all the women in the world, 3.5 billion women, has to become one woman. So basically what the Messiah comes to do, he comes to marry the object part. Initially, there was only one object part, and when the Messiah came, there were 3.5 billion yeah. object parts. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, if you're looking at the process of restoration, every single object partner in the world is actually supposed to receive the Messiah's seed. Wow. But that's what the Six Married Providence is about. It's about that since the Messiah physically can't be giving his seed to every single woman, there's representative women through which he transfers his seed representatively to all the women of the world. And so that process of restoration is a one-time event which the Lord in the Second Coming does. And once it's fulfilled, then it restores the relationship back to one man and one woman. Right. So that's, that's the difference in understanding, is that the Messiah comes as a unique role. He, he comes fully as a man, but he's also fully God. And that's the unique nature of the Lord in the second coming. And the, and the unique mission of the Lord is to restore what was lost. And so that process of restoration happens only once. And so once that's done, then it goes back again to the original order, which is one man and one woman. That's what principle requires. And if you study principle and you understand principle, you can you can understand theologically why, why it has to be like that. We were many years in the church, we never heard about it. Uh, That's the problem. I, I ask you, were they ashamed to, uh, to tell us about it? Yes. yes. That's the problem of the archangelic leadership. Is they were they they are ashamed to teach it. Not only are they ashamed to teach it, but the problem is is that because they didn't teach it, they create the foundation for this rebellion of the Han Mother. Mm -hmm. So that's why for the second king to for him to fully in, come come into his responsibility and become the king, he had to champion the mission of the Messiah and explain the mission of the Messiah. Oh, and that's what the king did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If so, uh, Jesus, if he didn't die, so he had also six marriages. Well, he should have six, sixty, six hundred, six thousand. Sure. Same thing. Same he thing. Absolutely. The problem. If you study the study the, the the look at the uncanonized gospels, the, the gospels which are not canonized, especially in regard to the the canon the the uh, gospel of Mary Magdalene, that it, that actually talks about that, because Mary Magdalene's heresy after Jesus' crucifixion was that she was the moon goddess, and Jesus was the sun goddess, <coughs> that they were actually 
husband and wife, and that the apostles have revolved around them. Archaeology now in Israel is discovering er very early Mary Magdalene churches, and they found mosaics where they actually saw in the center Jesus Christ picture with, with Mary Magdalene surrounded by 12 disciples. <coughs> so you can see the heresy of Mary Magdalene is identical to the heresy of Han Mother. Mm. Right. Wow. The problem in this story from the far is the problem of shame. Hmm? Shame? Shame. Shame. You're, you're, you're talking about no one's family? No, no, shame. 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 Generally. This, this uh, the problem is not the shame. The problem is that the blood lineage was changed. The problem with, with, with Adam is that he was basically had his lineage changed because he was dominated by Eve. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you do the three-day ceremony, you have that reversing of that order where the woman is on top and then the man gets on top at the end once he was restored from his archangelic position to the position of son. <coughs> so in order to reverse the pattern of the fall, the father who comes, the, the Christ who comes, has to dominate women and has to be on top. I was thinking about the Jesus, the Catholic mm -hmm. Church. They were ashamed to speak about sex. Jesus, I don't think it was the same to talk about sex. No, the Catholic Church. Sure. Well, the, the Catholic Church is complete heresy. It's the same heresy mm -hmm. as the Han Mother. That's, if you look at the, the, the Mother Mary theology in the Catholic Church, that's the only begotten daughter theology, mm -hmm. which is basically fallen Eve theology, it's goddess theology. It'd be good if, in OSDP, we teach really deeply about Six Marys. Yeah, it's part we of it. teach about Six Marys. You know, that's, that's the position we have to be very clear on, is the nature of restoration. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. now, the nature of restoration requires God's seed to be implanted in every woman. Right. <coughs> and that, that is the essential mission of the coming of the Messiah. And then our teaching is very clear because the Messiah has come in the second coming and fulfilled that mi mission that proceeding going forward, all uh, people who follow in the Messiah's footsteps are back to the situation of one man and one woman because the providence of that restoration is done and it's not to be repeated. Mm -hmm. Anybody who says that they have to repeat that is a heretic. Mm -hmm. Right. So those kind of aspects of the theology, we need to, as we go forward, make it very clear on what our theological position is. Mm -hmm. It should not be hidden, it should not be, you know, it, it should be front and center whenever we teach the principle. Mm -hmm. Mission of the Messiah, what the Messiah must do. Well, that's the essence of the blessing, isn't it? Passing yeah. the Messiah's seed Absolutely. through the blessing into um, blessed marriages. Mm -hmm. So we teach it, and then we teach that that mission was accomplished by Reverend Sun Myung Moon, and that's why we're back to the original order of creation of one man and one woman. Amen. That's what we need to teach. <coughs> So actually, that teaching is essential, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the that's really the big dividing line between the Orthodox Church and the Heretic Church. Mm -hmm. The Orthodox Church sees that the Messiah is fulfilling the mission of the Messiah. The Heretic Church sees the Messiah as a, a man with weakness, mm -hmm. right? Who needs to be saved by the harlot mother, mm -hmm. right? <coughs> right. <coughs> So that's why we cannot hide or be ashamed of the mission of the Messiah. We have to go mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. talking about the mission of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. That's what it's all about. It's about the seed. Yeah. The seed of God. 
So this is the challenge which we have. As we, as we struggle to complete God's will, we have to struggle to see things from God's perspective. Because if we look at things from the human perspective, we are, not, we are going to lead ourselves astray. Yes, it's all about Christ. It's all about the seed. I mean, we, we, you know, we need to define the world of Satan and the world of God very clearly. That's why, that's why the understanding of the meaning of Babylon is so important. Babylon is the gate of the gods. It's the woman who has her legs open. It's the womb theology. It's the one womb which receives a lot, a lot of sperm from different guys. It's the whore. So we have to understand the religion of Satan is going to be the religion of the whore. So that if Satan's religion is the religion of the whore, what is God's religion? It's going to be the opposite. It's not going to be the womb religion, it's going to be the seed religion. この宗教を中心とした that's, that's what Christianity is all about. It's about Christ, Jesus Christ, and His first and second coming as the seed. キリスト教、キリスト教の信仰とキリスト教の神学を見たときも、すべてあのイエス様に関するまいようです。イエス様が あ、キリスト教、イエス様が召者として来て再立主が来て種を持つ神の種を持ってくるっていうのがキリスト教の神学的思想です。なるほど。Well, there should be 3 billion Marys because every woman is supposed to get the seed. Because God told them to get to have all the women of the world. That's what the definition of Christ is. He's the bridegroom. This is the this is the fundamental error which people make. They expect the Lord of the Second Advent to be a role model. He is not the role model. He is Christ who comes to fulfill the purpose of creation. Yes. And that is what the second king is. He is the role model. Which you put onto the two parents. If you didn't have a problem with father fulfilling his mission, then the mission of two parents was completed in one generation. But now you have a role model. You have an apostle who follows Christ of the second comic who is absolutely pure. Well, I'm sitting next to him. I heard it all. I understand it. Why don't you? Because your ears are closed. He didn't say the Messiah has to plant the seeds to also make Yes, he does. Did he? He did. I heard him a hundred times. I did. You don't speak Because you don't speak Korean. <laughs> Well, the mission of Christ is very clear. He is the bridegroom. He is the seed for all the womb. In 1979, he walked up and down those aisles in the ballroom, touched every sister's hand. At that point, I felt like I was his bride. So I think that... Well, that's, that's what he said. He said all the women are his bride. Uh, the episode of the six Marys in True Father's Course was it, should it have been part of the original course of the Messiah, or was it a, a secondary course no, owing no. to some failure? No, no, it's central. No, no, no. The, the, the bridegroom is a center, center of returning Christ. 
the central identity of Christ when he returns is the bridegroom. So we have to understand that it's absolutely central to providence. It's the bridegroom is the one that will take in out of the ten the five virgins. So the bridegroom, Jesus himself described himself as the bridegroom that will return. So it's absolutely central to the mission of the Lord's Second Advent. Because the mission, the mission of the Lord's Second Advent is to establish the seed of God and the family of God, which comes from the seed of God. The seed and spermata of God, which is the male seed. That's why Jesus is a male. He, could, he doesn't come androgynously. He doesn't come as some kind of transsexual. He is a male because his kingdom will be, you know, set and created. And his sovereignty will reign and rule over this earth. And vanquish, it will vanquish, it will destroy the kingdoms of Satan of this world. So it's absolutely critical. And it's the primary identity of the Lord's second advent is, is the bridegroom. And then, of course, the second is judge, the judge of evil. And also third is the king of kings. So we see that Father has established both the bridegroom position through the six marriage providence, but then further on through the blessing providence in the three-day ceremony, where all the brides can become one with Christ uh, by becoming brides to Christ, and their husband becomes an archangel, from the archangel to a son of God, and then carries uh, the father's seed, just like a son carries the father's seed. And so that is absolutely central. And so Father, but Father, of course, the bridegroom still stands as the center of the marriage. And it is through the center that the husband relates with his wife and honors his father because now he's become a son. And it's from the covenant of marriage that the wife, who has, was a fallen woman, fallen Eve, who has become now restored Eve, honors her husband, which is the bridegroom or true Adam. And then on the second uh, level is the judgment of evil. So Father established very clearly the archangelic world, the satanic world, especially manifested in political Satanism, which he called Satanism and also communism, and identified that as the source of Satan's evil, and he judged it. And so that kind of clarity was not in, uh, existing in the body of Christ. Of course, we know because we had the whole liberation uh, theology movement. Basically, Christians, both Protestant and Catholic, teaching that Jesus was communist. That's like teaching Jesus was Satan or something. Okay. And so Father came and he clarified that and judged Satan's kingdom. And so he separated Satan's kingdom from God's kingdom. And then, of course, Father established his kingship, which is the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. So those three responsibilities of the Lord's Second Advent were all fulfilled, and now they're being, uh, they're continuing on throughout the th through the three kingships providence. And of course, you see now the sovereignty revolution uh, spreading over the world, at least in the West. Now it's spreading. Hey, Michelle. Father, also the, the episode of Sammy, is there an explanation? Mm hmm Of what? What was that? Uh, Sammy Park, is there an explanation, oh, providential well, you know, explanation? Does, well, you, I think because we're not understanding the role of the bridegroom. The bridegroom, the bridegroom must take on all the fallen wombs, must become one with the bridegroom. It's very simple. All the fallen wombs must become one of the bridegroom. That's how fallen wombs become, uh, produce the next generation or second generation. They produce God's children, even though they're fallen wombs. You see what I mean? So it doesn't matter, you know, Sammy, six Mary, it doesn't matter. It should be six billion or three billion Marys. It should be three billion Marys that are connecting to Christ, because then their womb is, can bring forth God's children. That's what the whole blessing is. That's the blessing, three-day ceremony, 
the covenant of blessing is where all people become engrafted to God's lineage, not only become his adopted children, actually his actual children. Russia again? Yes, Russia. Okay. Related to that, you would think that the Messiah, more than anyone else, would embody the teaching that he brings to the people. So if he's teaching people don't commit adultery, you would think that he would not uh, have uh, relationships out of, outside of his marriage. Otherwise, who will listen to him and follow? Uh, how, how do we explain that? No, I think this, it's important because the, Christ is unique. So Christ has a unique mission. For example, in the Bible, when Jesus comes back and literally kills the other people of the kingdom, that doesn't mean that all Christians should just, even after that's done, all Christians should continue just killing as they, as they desire. But there, when, the, when Christ comes, he, is, he has a different role, and he is, he is ontologically different. So he has a different mission than the victory that he has to walk both in indemnity and on the cross is different from, from, from uh, not only his followers, but the generations that come after him. And he gives us the blessing of the blessing, which is very clear in terms of our, you know, uh, living, up in, living up to the ideal that God has given from Adam and Eve. But Father must burden the cross, uh, you know, and, and indemnity of the 10,000 crosses for him to stand victorious and completely separate all the fallen peoples, including the, especially the fallen women from Satan to be reclaimed. And that's why he gives fallen, that's why when you married your spouse, even though she was a under, fall, under Satan's lineage, he, and you were also Satan's lineage, but you were made from archangel to son, then he gives one of his sons to the fallen woman, which then also allows her to become the bride, the Christ. You see, but the, we, this is the problem. We, do, we don't have the mission that the Messiah has. Jesus didn't give the mission for everybody to, he, they, he did say, pick up your cross, but not all Christians had to die literally on a cross. Right? He had to pay that price. And we also think, we may think that, oh, if we do the same thing as Jesus and die on the cross, that we will have the same effect. We won't because Jesus is a substantial body of God on earth. So his sacrifice on the cross means everything. It's, of, it's, of, uh, it's the road to salvation. And so it's not, it's about... Father, and as the Lord's second advent, having to fulfill his mission and then to establish his kingship and kingdom, where in which the ideal of God and the law of God and the principle of God is very clearly put forth. So that why, that's why that mission is, over, is done. And so that's why, for example, any of the kingships or any of the future blessed families cannot use that as an example they have already given the, been given the principle. They've already be, been given the ideal. And the Messiah has walked that course and been victorious there. You see? That course has been fulfilled. <clears throat> 